the threat of nuclear war, once a distant nightmare, has re-emerged as a chilling possibility. The potential loss of life, the destruction of our cities, and the long-term consequences for our planet weigh heavily on our minds. We live in a time where the unthinkable could become a reality. While we hope and pray that such weapons will never be used, it is crucial that we acknowledge the potential threat and equip ourselves with the knowledge to survive. Knowledge is power, and in a situation as dire as a nuclear attack, the right knowledge could be the difference between life and death. Thinking about a nuclear attack is unsettling, even terrifying. The images that come to mind, mushroom clouds, burning cities, and radiation sickness are difficult to process. However, burying our heads in the sand won't keep us safe. Facing the unthinkable means confronting our fears and acknowledging the potential danger. We need to understand the immediate and long-term effects, the risks of radiation exposure, and the steps we can take to mitigate those risks. When we understand the threats, we can start to formulate a plan. Preparation provides a sense of control in a situation that can feel utterly overwhelming. The old adage, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, has never been more relevant. Being prepared doesn't make us alarmist or paranoid, it makes us responsible citizens. Just as we prepare for natural disasters like hurricanes or earthquakes, so too should we prepare for man-made disasters like a nuclear attack. This preparedness could be the difference between life and death, not just for ourselves, but for our loved ones as well. In the face of unimaginable threats, knowledge and preparation are our greatest allies. A nuclear explosion is unlike anything else humankind has ever witnessed. The moment a nuclear weapon detonates, the world as we know it changes forever. The initial moments following a nuclear detonation are characterized by chaos and destruction. The first sign of a nuclear explosion is a blinding flash of light, far brighter than the sun, capable of causing temporary or even permanent blindness. This is followed by a searing heat wave, so intense that it can melt metal and incinerate anything in its path, even at a distance. The blast wave follows close behind, a wall of highly compressed air that expands outward with incredible force, leveling buildings, shattering glass, and tossing debris like toys. In the event of a nuclear detonation, the very first warning you may receive is a flash of light unlike anything you've ever seen. This blinding light, brighter than a thousand suns, is the initial release of energy from the nuclear reaction. If you find yourself caught outside during a nuclear explosion and you see a blinding flash, do not, under any circumstances, look directly at it. Instead, immediately seek cover behind anything that can provide a barrier between you and the oncoming blast. A car, a wall, even the ground can offer some protection from the initial blast wave and heat. The flash of light is your warning to take immediate action. Your survival may very well depend on how quickly you react and find shelter from the impending blast. While the immediate effects of a nuclear explosion, the blast and heat, are terrifying and destructive, the silent killer in the aftermath is radiation. Invisible to the naked eye, odorless and silent, radiation poses a long-term threat that can linger for weeks, months, or even years after the initial blast. Fallout, the radioactive dust that settles to the ground after a nuclear explosion, is a significant concern. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth after a nuclear event and change your clothes and shower as soon as possible to minimize exposure. Remember, knowledge is power, and in this case, it could save your life. The moment you realize a nuclear attack has occurred, every second counts. Your survival hinges on your ability to act quickly and decisively. If you see the blinding flash of light, immediately seek cover. Do not hesitate. Every second you waste increases your exposure to the deadly blast wave and heat that will follow. Find the nearest, sturdiest structure possible and get inside. Once you've found cover, get down low and stay away from windows. Cover your head and neck with your arms to protect yourself from flying debris. After the initial blast wave and heat have passed, your next priority is to find secure shelter from the fallout. Fallout consists of radioactive particles that are sucked into the atmosphere by the explosion and then rain down on the surrounding area. The ideal fallout shelter is underground with thick walls and ceilings made of dense materials like concrete or lead. If you can't reach a designated fallout shelter, your next best option is to seek shelter in the basement of a sturdy building. The deeper underground you can go, the better. Once inside your shelter, seal off any cracks or openings around doors and windows with duct tape, plastic sheeting, or wet towels. Take every precaution to minimize your exposure. 
Survival in a post-nuclear attack environment depends on understanding and utilizing the principles of time, distance, and shielding. Time. The longer you can avoid exposure to radiation, the better. Radiation levels are highest immediately after the explosion and then gradually decrease over time. Distance. The farther you are from the source of radiation, the lower your exposure will be. Shielding. The more shielding you have between yourself and the source of radiation, the better. Shielding materials, like lead, concrete, and even earth, can absorb radiation and reduce your exposure. When seeking shelter, choose locations with as much shielding as possible between you and the outside environment. Surviving a nuclear attack isn't just about the immediate aftermath, it's about being prepared for the long haul. Water. Store at least one gallon of water per person per day for a minimum of two weeks. Food. Stock up on non-perishable food items that require no cooking or refrigeration. First aid kit. A well-stocked first aid kit is essential for treating injuries and illnesses. Radio, a battery-powered or hand crank radio will be your lifeline to the outside world. Other essentials. Include items like a flashlight, extra batteries, a whistle, a multi-tool, a map of your area, and copies of important documents in your survival kit. Having a well-stocked survival kit can make all the difference. After the initial blast, the threat of a nuclear attack doesn't simply vanish. Instead, it transforms into an invisible enemy radiation. Fallout, composed of radioactive particles, contaminates the environment, making it crucial to understand the concept of radiation decay. Imagine an hourglass slowly emptying. The moment the nuclear bomb detonates, the hourglass flips and the radiation levels are at their peak. As time passes, the radiation naturally decreases, just like the sand in the hourglass. This invisible countdown can last for days, weeks, or even longer. The direction and speed of the wind play a significant role in how far and wide fallout travels. If you are downwind from a nuclear blast, you are at a greater risk of being exposed to fallout, even if you were a considerable distance from the initial explosion. Monitoring weather patterns and understanding wind direction is crucial for predicting fallout patterns. Rain can wash out some radioactive particles from the atmosphere, depositing them onto the ground. This can contaminate water sources and make it dangerous to be outside without protection. Weather reports, if available, become vital sources of information after a nuclear attack. Your knowledge of the weather could determine your survival. In the aftermath of a nuclear attack, the first 48 hours are the most critical. During this period, radiation levels are at their highest and staying sheltered is paramount to survival. Think of it as a mandatory lockdown for your own safety. While the initial blast is instantaneous, the danger of fallout is a lingering threat. During these crucial 48 hours, it's essential to remain in your designated shelter, minimizing exposure to the outside environment. A basement, an interior room on a lower floor, or even a sturdy table used as a makeshift shield can significantly improve your chances of survival during this critical period. Section 4. Monitoring the Unseen. Staying informed about radiation levels. In a post-nuclear world, information is your most valuable resource. Knowing the levels of radiation in your area is vital for making informed decisions about when it's safe to leave your shelter or if you need to find a more secure location. A battery-powered or hand-cranked radio becomes your lifeline to the outside world. Government agencies will broadcast updates on radiation levels, safe zones, and evacuation routes if available. Keep your radio tuned to emergency broadcast stations and listen for instructions from authorities. Don't rely on rumors or speculation. Accurate information can be the difference between life and death in a post-nuclear environment. Remember, radiation is invisible and odorless. You can't see it, smell it, or taste it, making it all the more important to rely on reliable sources of information. Stay informed, stay vigilant, and stay safe. Shielding your body. The armor against radiation. Shielding is your suit of armor against radiation. Denser materials absorb harmful rays better. Lead is a top choice for shielding, commonly used in medical x-rays. Concrete also offers excellent protection. Think concrete walls or basements. Dirt or sandbags can reduce exposure. Every bit of shielding counts.
Section 2, Decontamination Procedures, Removing the Unseen Threat. Imagine returning home after a walk in the rain, your coat damp and droplets clinging to your hair. Now replace that rain with invisible radioactive particles. That's the threat of fallout contamination. If you've been exposed to fallout, it's crucial to remove your outer layer of clothing as soon as possible. This simple act can remove up to 90% of the radioactive material. But handle those clothes with care, as they are now contaminated. Seal the contaminated clothing in plastic bags and store them far away from your living area. If possible, label them clearly as contaminated. Remember, even though you can't see the radiation, it's still there, clinging to the fibers. Next, wash yourself thoroughly with soap and water. Pay special attention to exposed skin and hair. A shower is ideal, but if that's not possible, use a bucket of water and a cloth. The goal is to remove any lingering particles. Section 3. The Fallout Shelter Advantage your best bet for long-term protection. In a post-nuclear scenario, a well-prepared fallout shelter becomes more than just a place of refuge. It transforms into a sanctuary, offering the best chance of long-term survival. Think of it as your personal fortress against the unseen enemy. An ideal fallout shelter is underground with thick walls and ceilings constructed from dense materials like concrete or reinforced with earth. This provides maximum shielding from radiation. A separate entrance with a right angle turn helps to minimize radiation exposure. Ventilation is crucial in a fallout shelter, as you'll be spending a significant amount of time inside. A hand cranked air pump or a pipe extending to the surface can provide fresh air while filtering out radioactive particles. Having basic amenities inside your shelter can make a world of difference. A designated sleeping area, a supply of non-perishable food and water, a sanitation system, even a simple bucket toilet, and a first aid kit are essential. Section 4, Mental Fortitude, the Unspoken Weapon. In the face of a nuclear attack, our physical preparations are crucial, but equally important is the strength of our minds. Mental fortitude becomes an unspoken weapon, helping us navigate the fear, uncertainty, and potential chaos of a post-nuclear world. Panic and despair can be as dangerous as any physical threat. It's easy to succumb to fear, but it's crucial to remember that our minds are powerful tools. Maintaining a sense of calm and focusing on the tasks at hand can significantly improve our chances of survival. Having a support system in place, even if it's just one other person, can make a world of difference. Talking through fears, sharing burdens, and supporting each other emotionally can provide a much needed sense of hope and resilience. Remember, even in the darkest of times, the human spirit has an incredible capacity for resilience and adaptation. By nurturing our mental fortitude, we equip ourselves to face the challenges ahead with greater strength and determination. Section 1. The Will to Survive. Turning Knowledge into Action. We've covered the immediate impact of a nuclear explosion and the long-term threat of radiation. But knowledge without action is like a seed unplanted. Translate that knowledge into concrete action. Begin preparing now. Identify potential shelters in your home and workplace. Gather essential supplies for at least two weeks. Preparation empowers you to act decisively in a crisis. A shared responsibility, preparing for a safer future. We are not powerless against the threat of nuclear war. Building a safer future requires collective effort towards peace and disarmament. Engage in dialogue about the dangers of nuclear weapons. Support organizations working towards nuclear non-proliferation. Advocate for peaceful resolutions and diplomacy. Every voice against nuclear weapons brings us closer to a safer world.